Hey, do you want to run a simulation in Fusion 360 to see if your part's going to hold up to its stresses and displacements? Let's do it! Hey, I'm Tyler Beck. So today we're going to be covering simulation in Fusion 360. So if you're brand new to this or you're coming from another FEA package or you're using a different analysis package, I'm going to go through the basics of setting up a study and some of the little gotchas that I bumped into my first time using the Fusion 360 static study. So let's jump into it. Here we are in a Fusion 360 static study. This is the end result. And let's start with the end in mind and we'll work our way backwards and talk about setting this up. So what I'm looking at is it looks like a gravity load there. It probably got loaded at the end and it's being held somehow. When I look at displacement, that's how much movement I might expect. The max movement is, you know, a thousandth of a millimeter, so it's pretty small. This is exaggerated, right? This is not uh, true to form what we would expect. And here's the stress distribution that we're seeing as well. And the max is 0.28 megapascals. Okay, so how do we get this set up in the first place? Back at the model, we right click in our browser and go to simulation. We'll start a brand new static study. Choose static stress. It's a simple loading. And what I'd like to do is work my way down this list. The one big gotcha I'll warn you about is never add additional load cases, new load case, and don't and not fill it out. I bumped into that my first time through that I had nothing in load case two or nothing in load case one and nothing happened, it wouldn't run. Okay, I'll delete that. So I go through and first I wanna make sure that I have my model, it has the body, it's using steel for my material, which that defines how it will behave with the load. We'll say that steel is adequate for right now and then I will set up the load and constraints. I can also come up here and do it as well. Either way, I'll select this face as the face that's receiving the force. I'll then click for a direction. Use an edge for direction. The load is still occurring on this face and type in a value. Okay, I think it's important to know that the first time I wrote a study, it's all qualitative in my mind meaning that it's just to get the study set up, get it working, make sure things are behaving kind of like I'd hope. I'll do a load case, excuse me. I'll add a constraint and I'm going to fix. Fixing is rarely the most accurate option and rarely should you really use it when you're looking for good numbers. But when you're just getting things set up and just want to get a quick study run, it's fine to fix it. And we'll get into more of that when we get into a more advanced uh, video on simulations. But for now, let's right click on the mesh and generate a mesh. And this is building a mathematical model or a way to measure all the displacements across that, this model. So you can see it used these um, tetrahedrons to fill in this space. And then we'll right click do a pre-check maybe, it, everything looks okay. That'll tell you if you have any missing information. I'll hit solve. It now takes the mesh that was already run, applies those boundary conditions like the fixed back end and the load on this face. And so now I can see this plot that pops up. I'll come over to the plot and find that it's a safety factor that it's giving me, an eight, a safety factor of eight. So it's saying that um, I can handle eight times the, the load. So in theory, 800 newtons might be acceptable uh, given these parameters. Again, this is all qualitative. I don't trust any of these numbers really yet because I haven't examine the mesh, I haven't examined the boundary conditions and what's going on here. But for just getting a feel for the behavior of this material, 
this geometry, this loading, it's looking pretty good. I look at displacement. Displacement is a, is a strong giveaway. One good rule of thumb is you don't want to see large displacement in a static study. Uh, rule of thumb is 4%. So if you're getting 4% drop here, oh, consider, considering the length, and I'm not, I believe this is a four inch beam here and it's not dropping 4% uh, there. So I'm not too worried just now. And I can switch to a different unit and there we go. Definitely not 4% um, in large displacement happening. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the deformation scale is exaggerated. So let's look at that for a second. If I go to my results and say actual, then it's going to look pretty much just like the model. So it, you're saying that we don't actually expect any visible deformation once we load it up with 100 newtons. And that's, that's encouraging. Those results are helpful, that deformation, so that you can understand what's happening and the behavior you should expect. So that's the basics of setting up a simulation study in Fusion 360. And I'm gonna go through this more in depth in my simulation series on Fusion 360. So check that out in the playlist linked below. And thanks for watching.